Hello and welcome, my name is Stefano and today we're going to be taking a look at a switch that TP-Link sent over. This is the TL-SG3210XHP-M2. Wow, that was a mouthful. And this switch is particularly interesting for a few reasons. The main one being that it is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet switch with two SFP plus ports. And why is that interesting? Well, TP-Link has a line of access points like the EAP66HD, 660HD, um, and that is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet based access point. So that means that this switch is actually capable of providing the throughput or bandwidth for that access point on a large network or a large um, scale deployment. Well, maybe not large necessarily, but in a business like situation. So in the box included with the switch is of course your power cable, always a plus. Oh, and an installation manual that I pulled out. It's got little feet here as well as screws for your rack mount ears because this thing can be rack mounted and it fits in a standard 19 inch um, rack or network rack, server rack or network rack. And of course it has an RJ45 um, console connector here as well. So that's included. And then of course we have the switch itself. Alright, so this thing is pretty freaking cool. I actually really like the color of TP-Link's switches. Um, it breaks up that like typical black that you would always see. Uh, white is also really nice, but I like this color. So let's talk about the switch. So this thing has a boatload of layer two and layer two plus features. I mean a lot. It's probably easier to list the features it doesn't have versus the features it does have. But we won't get into that. I'll just try and rattle off the ones I know off the top of my head. So some of those layer two and layer two plus features include things like static routing, IGMP snooping, uh, MLD snooping, 802.1Q, Mac protocol VLAN, STP, RSTP, MSTP streaming, uh, link aggregation, port isolation, DHCP relay, 802.1P, DSCP, quality of service, rate limits, access control list for IPv4 and IPv6, um, IP Mac port binding, a ARP inspection, I would hope so. And of course, 802.1x and radius slash tacx plus authentication uh, for if you have one of those servers running. So you can do all that there. And there's actually a lot more than that. Those are just the ones that I kind of remembered off the top of my head. And uh, if you wanna know more specifically about the switch, I would highly recommend checking out TP-Link's website because they have a full spec sheet of everything that this switch is capable of doing and then some. So this switch is, can be managed through the command line, like I mentioned earlier, through that RJ45 to console port. Uh, it also has a micro USB port here on the far left. If you do not like the command line interface, that's fine because in standalone mode, you can access the web UI by going to the IP address 192.168.0.1. Um, or if you have the Omada software, you can adopt this and integrate that um, with your Amata controller or Amata cloud-based controller. So the ports on this thing, um, starting with port one through eight here, are these are all 2.5 gigabit E PoE plus enabled ports. The, P, the power over ethernet has the uh, compliancy standard of 802.3 AF and AT. So that can provide up to 30 watts of power to any access points or other devices like IP cameras that you may have on your footprint. And I think that means that this thing can supply up to 240 watts of power to all of your devices, which is pretty beast. Um, I believe that's what 30 times eight is, is 240. And then of course, on the far right, it also has two SFP plus ports that are 10 gigabit capable. On the rear side of the switch, we have a place to put your Kensington lock, just in case this thing sits on a desk and not fit it inside of a rack. Of course, you can attach a grounding cable to this spot right here on the rear. And then of course you have a power inlet also on the rear. Let's crack this thing open and see what's on the inside. Opening the switch is pretty simple. There are screws here on the side, as well as two on the rear and another two on the opposing side. So let's get these unscrewed and I'm curious to see what all is going on inside of this thing. Should be pretty interesting.
Opening this should be pretty simple. This should slide back some and then just lift up to reveal the components inside. So there's like this weird plastic flap that appears to be covering the power supply, which is neat to see. I haven't seen that before, but it is a nice addition. Our capacitors are here for this thing. It's pretty baller, I would say. And then over here, more interestingly, is the PCB for the actual networking equipment itself. Um, the backplane for this is capable of doing up to 80 gigabit per second, uh, which is neat. And then of course you have your SFP plus uh, controllers over here, or ports, whatever you want to call them. Not really sure what all needs to be shown here. Um, the fans here look like they are standard fans. Uh, these are non-PWM, it looks like. And it looks like they also have some glue holding them in. And to me, that means that you can replace these. Let's see how many watts these fans are. Um, so these are 1.44 watts and 12 volts from Sunon, a very popular fan providing company. Um, so that's cool. Not entirely sure what else needs to be covered on this PCB. Um, it looks pretty normal to me, or I would say. Nothing jumps out to me as um, too over overtly interesting, I guess would be a good word. I just realized on the Switch it didn't have one of those stickers that says warranty void if seal is broken, so that's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, this Switch is clearly targeted for businesses, but I think small studios, uh, maybe something larger than SPX Labs that can't really afford a 10 gig switch or maybe just doesn't really need that 10 gig switch because you're not really pushing a lot of video or I don't know. 2.5 gigabits pretty quick and then also it looks like that a lot of ISPs are starting to roll out 2.5 gigabit and 10 or and 5 gigabit um, to people's homes as well and you know a studio like mine's run out of a home so this would actually be a pretty good option if I wanted to upgrade my internet to 2.5 gigabit and then that would mean that any of my clients that are capable of 2.5 gigabit ethernet um, could plug in here or if I use the um, EAP 660 HD which is a 2.5 gigabit capable access point now my wireless devices is my wireless devices could see above one gigabit per second uh, throughput when you know transferring data to my servers or to the internet in general which is pretty neat so this is a really nice switch i think people that would be interested in to have at home and you know given its price it's not un or unaffordable 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 and also you don't need the amada cloud software um you don't need or i'm sorry the amada controller software or amada cloud this can run standalone so it's a pretty good option um, to include in an existing network if you needed to upgrade from one gigabit to 2.5 or even you know if you have something that is 10 gigabit capable in theory you should be able to use these SFP plus ports uh, to hit those 10 gig speeds and well with all that being said I think this is a good stopping point um, I hope you guys enjoyed this overview of the switch we will definitely put it to use in the future um, and talk more about it and actually set it up. I think the next video I will do about this is a standalone setup, how to use this, how to configure it, and then just use it on your existing network or add it to your existing network. And so I wanna thank you all for watching and I uh, appreciate you guys making videos like this possible um, because without you, TP-Link would not send me equipment um, to make videos like this one. So again, thank you all very much. Thank you, TP-Link, for sending this video out. And I will talk to you all next time. Peace. Wow, that smells good. That smells real good. Man, I wish you guys could smell this. This smells like literally right off the factory line. Ooh, you know that electronic smell.